Thanks so much, Rocky. It's great to be here at the Comeback Summit supporting the MOM Project. I'm Liz Gebbia, VP of Supervisory Affairs at Synchrony, and I'm joined by Claudine Hoverson. She is our Chief Talent Strategy Officer at Synchrony and also a mom of two. I'm a mom of two. And so we've got a lot to talk about in terms of how we manage the mom life, the work life, and how we put it all together. I am a returner, so I have a lot of passion about this. I'll give you a little background on my end, and then I'm going to turn it over to Claudine. But my background in terms of being a returner started when I was in a corporate communications job. And I had a family, was very committed to being a full-time mom. And so I was out of the corporate workplace for over 10 years. And then at about the 11-year mark, I got a call from a previous manager. And she said, Liz, I have a full-time role at Synchrony. Are you interested? And I said, I'm very interested, but I do have one condition. I need to be able to leave work every day at about two, scoop up my kids from school, and then I'll get right back online and finish whatever I need to do. But I need that one hour of flexibility to be able to get my kids. So it was a little risky to say that, but I said, I, I, you know, I, I was being true to myself and I needed to do it. And we had a few conversations. And then in the end, she came back to me and she said, we can do it. And it was at that moment, I knew Synchrony was a very special and unique place because they recognized me for my whole self, not just as a potential employee, but someone who was a mom of two children, had a family and needed to be available for the family. And I think also one thing I really realized right away too, is that Synchrony didn't view my time as a full-time mom and away from the workplace as a deficit. They actually viewed it as an asset because they recognized that the skills and the traits that I had before taking a break, I still had. So I was still a skilled negotiator. I still had executive presence and I could build trust with my team and with my executive leadership. I was able to make solid decisions and make them quickly. I had good judgment and I liked being part of a team and I liked being part of a solution. So Synchrony was able to take all of that, bundle it up into a package that said, yes, please come back, return to the workplace. We will give you the kind of resources that you may need in terms of mentorship, critical experiences, all the types of support that weren't necessarily part of a structured program, but made me realize what this company was offering to me in terms of what I could also offer to them. So in a lot of ways, Synchrony was at the forefront because in 2013, not a lot of companies would say, yeah, leave it to go get your kids and then get back online. So I think they were trendsetters in a lot of ways with that flexibility. And it's only gotten better from there. So um, I've been able to pivot it in terms of moving from one function to another in the time I've been at Synchrony successfully because they gave me the support and the experiences I needed to make that happen. And I've also realized two promotions since I've been there. So I am so proud to be at Synchrony, be a working mom, be part of the solution at Synchrony, take advantage of all the wonderful benefits and resources that they have. And again, it all started with a conversation about saying, I need to go home at two, but then I'll be right back online. <laughs> and it's, it's been a, a fantastic journey ever since. So um, so that's a little bit about me and, and my experience with Synchrony. But Claudine, I'd love to turn it over to you. As our HR leader, you've got a whole perspective there that I think would benefit the audience. And, um, and it, the floor is yours. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, Liz, I smiled when you said you came with negotiating skills. I bet you honed those skills being home with the kids. Yeah. Right? <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'll warn everyone. Um, so I am a working mom of, of two. I have a 16 year old daughter and a 13 year old daughter. I have always uh, been in the workforce uh, with my kids. And I'll warn you, one of them is about to come home now. So you you might hear them. But the great thing uh, is, is that, you know, I think we are all so much more accepting of uh, the the work life and the home life these days. Um, as Liz mentioned, um, I'm the chief talent officer here at Synchrony. I've been with Synchrony for almost 15 years now. Um, in my career, I've worked in the office. I have traveled a great deal. I actually started working from home before working from home was cool. Um, and that was before the days when we were all uh, on camera um, all day long. Uh, but regardless, regardless, 
you know, I have um, been lucky enough to always uh, find a way to manage. And what I will say is now, um, you know, as we are uh, learning so much from the pandemic and what we've been through, uh, choice and flexibility is is really critical uh, to uh, employees. And as I, I go out and talk with people, I'm really proud of the decision that we made, uh, Liz, so early on, right? Mm-hmm. From the start, yes. we sent everybody home. We said, and that was out of safety, right? For all of our employees. And we had the yeah. luxury uh, to send everybody home at that point. Um, but we said, you know what, when we come back, we're going to continue to provide this choice and flexibility. Um, and it, it makes uh, work and life so much easier. And there's just a lot less anxiety being able to, you know, get the kids on the bus in the morning, get the kids off the bus in the afternoon, uh, and then log back on uh, to do what you need to do uh, to finalize your day. Uh, And, you know, I talk to a lot of HR leaders who say, oh, we don't have the luxury to allow all of this flexibility. And my challenge back to all of those HR leaders is where can you provide flexibility? Everyone can give a little, right? We have call center associates who have scheduled shifts and they're taking calls, um, but but we have found a way to split those shifts and help them with the flexibility that they need, uh, you know, to maybe be done it too and come back at eight. That's right. That's right. And I think that it's empowering a lot of times when as an employee, you feel like my manager, my broader team, they trust me. They know I have a deadline and they know I'm going to deliver. Yeah. And if I deliver it at this time or at this time, it made the deadline. And so they give us that flexibility. And, and that makes me feel like I'm more committed to Synchrony, quite frankly, because they're giving me what I need. So I want to give even more back to them. And um, and there's so many benefits, actually, besides what we're talking about. I'm, I'm going to go through a couple of them now that are beyond you know just the flexibility. And, and some of it was related to COVID. So we had the flexibility. We have something called Flex Fridays, where we try to limit the meetings and we give people some time in the afternoon to, you know, do what they might need to do. But we also have expanded childcare, right? And and my kids are older, so I don't need to take advantage of that. But I know colleagues who did. So if your regular childcare is not available, Synchrony is able to help you find um, some backup childcare. And that's really, you know, that's really very helpful. And, you know, when school is closed for a snow day and you might not know what to do, right? Um, Normalizing parental leave. You know, you shouldn't have to sneak away to have a baby. You shouldn't have to sneak away to take care of your new baby. It's something we all celebrate and we know that's such a critical time in a person's life. Embrace it, enjoy it. And then you come back to work more refreshed and just more whole as a person because you didn't feel like you lost out on having the time with your baby. Um, And then expanded well-being benefits, you know, with our wellness coaches. I've taken advantage of them. My family has. That was something that came out of COVID. And I think showing, showing the synchrony employees that we know you have a lot of stress and you have a lot going on. We want to help you through that. That's looking beyond what I'm just supposed to deliver as a VP of supervisory affairs. That's looking at me as the whole person. So I don't know a lot of companies that deliver all of that to us. So in my way, I feel like Synchrony has a competitive advantage in terms of of providing that and making it a place where the culture is is supportive, nurturing, and and wants the best for us beyond just the career. Yeah. And and Liz, you know, this all came from listening, right? Yes. Um, Right. And just uh, acting on what employees needed um, through, you know, pulse surveys, our regular um, uh, employee opinion survey, roundtables, focus groups, we listened. uh, And, and, you know, it wasn't uh, like we had to put a big team together to uh, test things. and, And that's what we did. So we'd go out and we'd test expanded childcare. We'd test um, you know, wellness coaches, and we listen to employees and see how they felt about the programs and the the services, and then we'd learn and 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 we'd go from there. Um, and and you know that's where our um, where our return ships 
and and the new programming that we're putting together really came from we we were talking mm -hmm. to employees like you who wanted to get or talking to candidates like you who wanted to get back into the workforce mm -hmm. and we realized that you need a little framework right uh you need right. a little bit of structure the flexibility is great the culture is great the benefits are great Mm -hmm. But coming back into the workforce uh, after being gone for a while or even changing roles from one company to another, right. Uh, right. when you are moving into a different environment, um, mm -hmm. you know, can cause some anxiety. And so what we did is just put a framework uh, for 90 days of support around what we're calling our return program. Now, our return program, full-time roles, right? These are not rotational roles. These are full-time or part-time, depending on, you know, what someone's looking for. Um, but but they're full-time roles. Um, and, and they really then have some resources and guidance to build relationships and get some of the development um, that, you know, uh, folks may need coming into the workforce from, from outside or, uh, you know, changing into a different organization. And, and that way, these can be unique to each individual. And we can tailor them and, and customize them a little bit um, through our return program coordinator um, mm -hmm. and the work they do to make sure that those transitions are successful. Yeah, yeah. And I think the, the key word transition is so important because, as you mentioned, it's people like me who were coming after being out of the game for a while. And then there's people who are gamefully employed somewhere that do want to make a shift. And, and we value both, right? At Synchrony, I feel like we value both. We recognize what someone can bring. And it starts at the top. Our CEO, Brian Devils, he starts right there in terms of saying, we want to have the best talent team that we can. And that means we're drawing from all different groups with all different experiences, but he recognizes the value with all of that. And that sets the tone within the company in terms of being welcoming and showing that there are resources. And let's be honest, I would have loved to have all of this stuff in place that Synchrony is going to do for returners when I came back. I, I had a wonderful experience, but I am definitely a little jealous of the folks that will walk through the door and will go through this program because it's so supportive, you know, and it makes you feel like you're not alone, right? It makes you feel like I'm not like coming back into this by myself. I'm part of, you know, a company that recognizes this and wants me to be part of the team. And there are, there are a couple of details I know around it. Like we want folks who do have at least five years of work experience, mm -hmm. right? So, so have some professional background that you can, you know, then pivot and, and leverage in terms of coming to synchrony. And then also um, probably at least two years of being out of the workforce. So um, so the five and the two are two numbers that I, I believe you're, um, you guys are looking at in terms of the return program, just to have some, some criteria for, um, you know, what you want. We've, we've got a couple of lane lines to help it be successful, right? Right. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And all that information is on our website. Um, uh, yes. Yes careers.com um, backslash return dash program for anybody who wants more, um, more information about it. Um, and, you know, everyone experiences choice and flexibility from day one uh, when you come into right. the organization. And the one other thing, um, you know, that in my role, I think is really important in terms of the way in which things are structured and our ability to give uh, all the choice and flexibility is that we completely transformed our performance management program to be outcome based. Uh, you and I didn't talk about that that yet, but you know that outcome based approach, those regular check ins with your manager, also really help a returner know they are on track. Right? They set their goals. They're having regular check ins with their leaders. Um, they are pivoting where needed because we all know. Uh, that the world does not operate in a yearly cycle anymore. Things can happen, you know, quarter by quarter, week by week sometimes, but you're mm -hmm. having those regular check-ins and then everything is outcome-based. It's not about nine, necessarily nine to five. It's about what you get done uh, in terms of achieving those outcomes that you've set forth uh, to achieve. Um, yeah. And it's in partnership with your manager and your team. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you touch on building relationships. I think that's what this is about in terms of having that relationship with your manager. And there shouldn't be any surprises when you're having those regular conversations with a manager, particularly when you're coming back into the workforce or changing from another company to synchrony. Um, those conversations are invaluable. 
And, and synchrony does have a culture where those are not, you know, structured things on the calendar. They can be very informal. They can be as frequently as you like. And that to me, yep. again, just builds a sense of community, which synchrony has always had. And I've always felt, um, you know, is again, promoted from the top. So, so I can't say enough things, good things about it. I, I you know, again, leaving at two o'clock turned into almost nine years of, of fabulous, fabulous experience and working with people like you and, um, and just knowing synchrony has my back in terms of who I am as a whole person and welcoming me in that way. So, um, so it's been great. Yeah. You were, you were, you had flexible work arrangements before flex work arrangements were cool. Right. <laughs> right. Um, I'm so glad you asked the question uh, and, and you returned to synchrony. Listen, it's been an awesome journey. And uh, I, you know, I would encourage anyone who is interested uh, to just, you know, check it out and, and, and see what we're all about here. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, it's been great talking to you. Thanks. Take care, Liz. You too. Bye. Wow, wow, wow. That was fantastic. Liz and Claudine, uh, thank you for sharing that. Everybody, I love reading the comments, so blow up the comments right now for Liz and Claudine. Uh, but we're going to change gears a little bit here. So welcome, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for being here today. My name is Nick Cott. I'm a customer success manager over here at The Mom Project. And today I have the privilege to introduce and chat with Ann Shire from Northern Trust. So Ann is a practice executive currently serving as the Omnium Platform Lead and head of the associated Omnium Change Management Team based in Chicago with some counterparts in India. Anne has 17 years of experience in the financial services industry, working a variety of client service and strategic development roles. So when Anne is not working hard at the office or at home, Anne is a volunteer working hard with a variety of organizations dedicated to serving underprivileged children. And Anne currently resides in the Western suburbs of Chicago with her husband and two children. Anne, that was a lot of introduction for a great person. How's it going today? Good. Thank you for having me, Nick. Oh, my gosh. It's our pleasure. It's good to have you here. Um, so we'll get right into it today. Anne, tell me a little bit about yourself and what you do at Northern Trust. Sure, Nick. Thanks. And thank you again for having me. I'm, I'm really excited to talk today. Um, basically, at the, the start of it, I'm in my late 30s. I, like you said, currently live in the western suburbs of Chicago, and I'm married with two elementary school-aged kids. I have a nine-year-old son and a seven-year-old daughter. Professionally, I love bringing people together to identify business problems and create clarity around how to, to find the solution and execute that solution. And this is core to what I do at Northern Trust. Here, I lead a team called Omnium Change Management, and I'm the Omnium Platform Lead. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, we are a team that's about 85 people strong in the U.S. with roughly the same equivalent, actually a little bit bigger than that, in India. Our team focuses on creating the business strategy and the project plans around that strategy and then executing them for our, our various Northern Trust businesses and clients that are on a proprietarily built software called the Omnium platform. This platform supports middle office and fund administration, services for hedge funds, private equity funds, asset owners, and large institutional fund managers. My teams include product owners and managers, business analysts, program and project managers, client implementation teams, uh, various technology solutions and automations teams, and uh, we have a financial strategy and operational component too. Our platform itself currently services over 130 global clients and has over 500 billion in assets, and it's poised to grow significantly in the next 18 months. Basically, we work with our clients, um, our business users, and our IT teams to execute all changes on this Omnium platform, hence our name, Change Management, to meet our evolving client needs and ultimately grow our revenue on it. It's basically a lot of large-scale technology project work. That certainly sounds like a lot of work, but I, I appreciate that. I think that's a, a perfect picture of you know, where you are and what you're doing now. And so let's take a look at you know, where you started. Uh, and I know we've talked a lot about this, but to share with everybody here, uh, you started your career journey in New York City on Wall Street. Is that right? Yep, that's right. Awesome. So can you please tell us, Anne, a little bit more uh, about your career journey and how that might have been affecting your family journey as well? For sure. <clears throat> I began my career at Goldman Sachs in 20, or I'm sorry, in 2006, after I graduated from a small liberal arts school uh, based in Pennsylvania called Susquehanna University. I worked in the prime brokerage business as a relationship manager to hedge fund clients. 
I did that for six years. And those were exciting and challenging years. I learned from some of the best and I really absorbed what it meant to work hard. I had a front row seat as part of the 2008 financial crisis. And I saw how macro events drive systemic policy changes to say the least. I worked my way to vice president around and around the five year mark. I met a man named Alex who is now my husband. Around the time that we were due to get married, he got a job offer that was going to take him to Chicago. And this was the first time that I was faced with a real life decision of, do I stay in my current job and city that I love or quote, move for a man? I was raised in a home um, with fairly traditional man woman roles. My father worked outside the home and my mother worked part time and primarily filled the important homemaker responsibilities. So whether they meant to or not, they raised me to be pretty feminist. And so I grappled with this decision for about two days. I then realized that while my career mattered greatly to me, my personal relationships and potential to start a family of my own were what I needed to feel fulfilled. So I left Goldman and I moved to the Windy City. I supported my brand new husband in his new role. And I spent a few months figuring out what my new life and my, my new career could potentially look like. Now, looking back, this leap of faith allowed me to see a new career course that I never would have recognized had I stayed on my original track. And honestly, it took me all this time to be able to really see that with that kind of precision. I ended up doing some consulting work at Ernst & Young, and then through that work, Northern Trust became my client. Through my time at Ernst & Young and in my engagement with Northern, I was exposed to a whole host of new ideas, business problems to solve, in other words. And I was stretched in ways professionally that frankly made me very uncomfortable. I was asked to be a subject matter expert in areas that I had to quickly learn myself before I could possibly lead and to project manage large scale initiatives. Now I consider myself to be a generally organized person but project managing at the level that they were asking me was a whole other bar to reach. I spent that first year in Chicago at Ernst & Young on the engagement with Northern, generally ranging from being clammy palmed and anxious, trying to figure out what the heck I was doing, to feeling a great sense of accomplishment when I helped the team achieve project success. The most amazing part of that experience, Nick, was at the end of that year, Northern approached me and asked if, they, if I would like to join them full time. And even more amazing was that I was seven months pregnant at that time, and it would have been easy and understandable for Northern to assume that I would wanna dial down my career and let my consulting contract, which was due to expire, naturally take place. But instead, Northern saw a business need that they thought I could solve and they let me make the decision for myself of what I wanted to do. They didn't make any assumptions about what starting a family may mean for me professionally. I said yes, and they supported me in navigating starting full-time, figuring out parental leave, and then returning to work to finding my new balance as a working mother. I will never forget that experience. And I was so grateful to the other professional women and men who made the opportunity possible for me. That was the catalyst to enabling the career growth that I've been able to experience these past 10 years and that brought me to where I am today. I strive to give the same opportunities to others wherever I can. And I also never assume someone's preferences or limitations based on where they are in their personal life. And that is fantastic. I see everybody in the chat you know, cheering you on and loving that story. And it, it is. And it's so relatable when you tell me that. And, you know, we talked about where you are now, where you've been. And I think that's quite a career pivot from what you do now. Uh, so I'm curious if you have any advice for those in the audience that are looking to make a pivot or potentially change their careers. Sure, Nick. Thank you. First off, I acknowledge that no two, no two career paths are the same. And these experiences are unique to me. But that said, I would say that if you're in a place in your life now where it feels like you are spending more time pushing a rock up a hill than feeling things more naturally flow, it is worth looking outside the box. In my mid-20s, I thought I would end up in investor relations at a hedge fund. If you asked me 15 years ago if I'd be running a large team focused on, on fintech projects, I never would have guessed that in a million years. But the project nature of the work gave me the flexibility that I needed to also be a wife and mother while still playing a meaningful role in the financial services industry that I enjoy. Further, and we heard about this in the last session, the hybrid work environment, you know, part home, part 
in a traditional office that has evolved since the pandemic has created added opportunities to try something that might not have been possible professionally a few years ago. Again, making it even more worth looking outside the box and having confidence in yourself um, and thinking about what could be different from what you've traditionally envisioned for yourself. You know more than you think and you can learn faster than you'd expect if you take a shot and give it your all. One more key next that I've been thinking about is the importance of working on your network throughout all points of our careers. I mean, we hear networking talked about a lot and sometimes that can feel overwhelming. Um, I know personally for me, sometimes I've thought, where do I even start? Well, personally, I think it can be very organic if you keep the idea of the relationship matters, perhaps even more than the work in mind. While of course content matters, people remember how you make them feel more than they may even remember the words that you say. Relationships that I built with my colleagues and friends were vital to my own career journey, and I really try hard not to ever take them for granted. We need each other to grow and succeed. And when something goes awry, as it inevitably always does, a strong support structure is what gets us through it. Seek out and value mentors. Uh, there are a few women in particular that I, that I have in my life that have supported me, and I still go to them today when I need advice. And I try to be that person for others whenever I can. And then, Nick, the last thing I'll say on this topic is that balance is key. And while my balance certainly doesn't look like your balance or anyone else's balance in particular, I really do think that finding your own authentic balance that enables you to put energy into work and into personal endeavors, whether that's family, friends, or other activities, is really key to avoiding burnout and renewing that energy for a lasting, fulfilling life. Awesome. And that's fantastic advice. I mean, a, a lot stands out to me you know, about the mentorship and especially about finding that balance. Um, if you don't have that balance, you can't be yourself at home. You can't be yourself in the workplace. And really what you want to make sure is that you have that. So that is fantastic. Um, so let's get a little advice from you on how to maintain that balance. Here's the last question for you, Anne. Uh, how do you maintain a balance at home and at work? Yeah, sometimes it's easier said than done. I'll admit it. Um, but I, I am honestly pretty structured and that's my saving grace. Um, frankly, I live by my calendar and I organize my schedule to maximize my time, both during my paid working hours and when I'm doing the work of raising my kids and being a wife. Also, Nick, I don't pretend to be able to do it alone. I don't care to ever be thought of as a superhero. I don't have any extended family nearby. So what's worked for my own family and me was to hire an au pair someone that lives with us and supports our childcare needs and also offers a wonderful cultural exchange. We've had au pairs with us from South Africa and we have a young woman with us from Brazil currently. And it's been a wonderful addition to our family and also helps me have the balance to do work and be a, a good mother when I'm not working. I use a cleaning service and I divide general household duties with my husband. And while it's never a perfect 50-50 division of labor, it ebbs and flows between us. We work as a team and we back each other up. Some days, of course, it still gets crazy and life throws curveballs. On those days, I try to take a deep breath, have a glass of wine if it's needed, and then try to give myself a little bit of grace and try again tomorrow. And I also look for the humor in everyday circumstances because that can help too. We can't be too serious because what fun is there in that after all? And I'm with you 100%. And I, I know from working with you and the team that you're always looking for the humor, but you're getting the job done too. And I, uh, I want to say thank you, Anne. Very much appreciate you joining all of us today. Excited to read the comments as we're going through here. Um, but any, any last words, anything else or a good goodbye before we turn it over to Tara and Jeanette? Yeah, no, I, I appreciate you too, Nick, and the partnership that we have built between Northern and, and the MOM Project holistically. Um, it's, it's been wonderful to see us grow, and I'm so excited to continue to find new talent as we grow our teams down the line. Thanks so much again for having me today. Thank you, Anne. Now I'm going to turn it over now to Tara and Jeanette. Excited to see you all on, on here. Bye, everybody. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Nick and Anne. That was amazing. We love celebrating pivots and balance and a little wine, too. Hi, everyone. I'm Tara Hudson, Director of Lifecycle Marketing at The Mom Project. 
Thank you so much for being here with us. I've loved every bit of the energy you all have brought in the chats and breakout sessions. And like Rocky said, I hope we're all standing a little bit taller today. As my team and I have worked so intentionally to create a unique and meaningful comeback experience for you all, it seems only fitting that today I have the honor of speaking with Jeanette Woods, founder and CEO of Sketch and Form. Featured in Ad Age and Business News Daily, Jeanette has helped small businesses and large enterprises like L'Oreal, HBO, Salesforce, and Maybelline grow into sites grow sites into highly successful, high-grossing channels of their business. And today, she'll be sharing insights on not only what it takes to launch and grow a successful e-commerce business, but also how she has embraced change in both her personal and professional life. Jeanette, welcome. Thank you so much. I am elated to be here with other fellow moms. You're all my people. Um, and so I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. Me too. And I'm so glad that we get this time together and that we got to groove to Beyonce to get ready. I would love to start us off by learning a little bit more about you and your career journey. Absolutely. So um, in all sincerity, this is one of the first times that I'm actually talking about my journey in this open type of way, but I'm really happy to do this here with you all. Um, so I'll start with this. It hasn't been an easy journey. Um, I am thankful for the challenges that brought me here, but I started off as a young single mom in New York City, working three jobs, attending college. Um, it was really challenging. I graduated in the middle of the Great Recession. Most of my working, what, most of my graduating class, they couldn't find jobs. So they ended up going back to school, became teachers and so, so on and so forth. Um, I really hustled um, back when that was a trend and tried to find um, any opportunities I could. So I've, you know, I've been a freelancer, I've been laid off, I've been unemployed, I've been a business owner, I've been through all of the experiences. Um, and finally, you know, I ended up landing a job in corporate. Um, and from there, I learned very valuable lessons about um, economics, business, and, and also probably most importantly, self-worth. Thank you so much for sharing your journey with us, the mom project, the moms with us, the allies, the advocates, we are your community. So if there's any place to share, it's here. For those in the audience who may not be familiar with Sketch and Form, can you tell us a little bit more about what you do? Absolutely. So Sketch and Form was actually started in New York in 2016. My first client was L'Oreal. Um, what we do is we work with companies to design, optimize, and improve their site experience to create a more functional experience for the user or customer. So basically the structure of how, you know, a site works. So you think about the example I like to give, I mean, I give a lot of examples, but, um, just to provide more clarity, um, just think about how you've been on a site or an app or you've been trying to like check out and, or, you know, whatever you're trying to do and you can't complete the task. This notoriously happens on a lot of like, um, you know, when you're paying bills and, mm -hmm. uh, government type size. And there's sort of a kink in the pipeline. Um, and that is essentially what I would be tasked to do is to come in and, and figure out a way to make that more user friendly so that both the user objectives and then the business objectives are being met. I mean, I think that is so important as a human. I can't stress enough the importance of just feeling seen or that an experience was created with me in mind. And as co-chair of the Mom Project's African-American ERG um, resource group, I love the way that you also emphasize that your mission is dedicated to creating opportunities and bringing awareness to the lack of racial and ethnic diversity in tech. I mean, I think that's also important to celebrate as well. Thank you for saying that. Yeah, that's huge for me um, and my team. I think the one thing that I like to say about that is that, you know, not having the representation in tech at the level that we would like to have it is has very real implications when you're talking about um, the developments within tech, right? You're talking about algorithms that are being developed without input from a diverse perspective. And that creates issues as we've seen in probably the news and media. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, uh, to me, is sort of the next frontier in social justice. Couldn't agree more. As a leader, I know that you keep a good pulse on all things. What are some changes that you see happening in today's workplace that we need to be mindful of as we navigate our career paths? So one of the things, and 
I might get a couple of eye rolls here because I know we've probably heard a lot about it recently, um, the chat GPT and AI stuff that has been coming out and we've been seeing a lot of, um, you know, uh, information and headlines about um, and media about those particular things. And I know there's a lot of nervousness um, around those developments and if they're going to replace jobs and so on. Um, obviously, this is a you know specifically a tech lane, right? But I think the reality is that ChatGPT does touch touch a lot of different parts, and just the AI in general touches a lot of different industries. Um, what I would say is, and I I literally was just having this conversation with another business owner this morning, you know, where we have an opportunity is to look at where we can continue to drive value by using this technology by leveraging it. You know, how can we start to lean more into the qualitative human side of things? you know, that's what we bring, right, in our own value. Um, and then, again, leveraging these tools to, you know, to do that in an even more robust way. Embracing it, right? Embracing that change. Now, I will admit I am someone who can sometimes be hesitant about change, probably out of fear, fear of the unknown, and fear of what's not in my control. Can you tell us about how you embrace change in your business and in your personal life? Yes. I mean, I have a lot to say. I only, I know we have a little bit of time with that, but I do, <laughs> do want to say that one of the things for me that was like a huge lesson was being mindful of my value. And, you know, and when I say that, I mean, you know, finding a way to detach that from a place, you know, what is it that, so let me say in a different way. When you think about a relationship you may have with a client or, you know, in, in any sort of work environment, you know, you are in effect leasing your talent in exchange for money, right? Or a paycheck. And I think that having that understanding that you have ownership over that value is so important. You know, if there's a layoff happening, whatever the changes are, just always knowing that you are the one who's bringing the value right? That has for me been a game changer because one of the things I used to say was like, I used to feel so when I, you know, used to work at in, in um, corporate, I used to be so connected to like, oh my gosh, like the, the things that I would deliver, right? As opposed to, oh, wow, what if I decouple that? I could actually, the same value I'm delivering for them, I could deliver for myself or my own business or my team. And just really having that understanding for me was a huge, like was a game changer. I know we didn't talk about this, but are there any sort of daily affirmations or things that you do um, to reaffirm or, you know, help yourself lean into that value? I have a lot of different tools. <laughs> so in terms of affirmation, I mean, let me, I think what I'll say is this, and I was, I've been talking about this a lot, so I feel like it's relevant to bring up here. It's having a support system. I did not have a built-in support system, Right. I had to create one. And so for me, that meant finding the right people to be, you know, to have these type of conversations with, to express, you know, um, challenges that I may be experiencing without judgment, you know, having the right support system, even if it's not built into your family or your environment. I'm also a person who, I think I was listening to Anne earlier, relocated to a whole new state with mm -hmm. no friends or family, you know, and so, yeah, you have to find a way to create that support system. And to me, that f is one of the most important things you could do. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, but in terms of affirmations, um, you know, I listen to a lot of Beyonce. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but yeah, really, it, helps. <laughs> it helps. But all seriousness, you know, um, I do have a couple of like um, decks that do have affirmations in them. And occasionally when I'm feeling you know, uh, sort of worn down or whatever, I'll, I'll reach for those and, I, and you know, I'll get um, the last affirmation that I had for myself with that deck was about intuition and just kind of, you know, checking into my intuition and, and just asking my own self, does this feel aligned? Yeah, I think it's so important, especially in these challenging days and times to check your intuition and keep that top of mind. And as you were talking about leasing your talents, um, to the company that you work for, I often say that it's important to remember that you can't control what you can't control and to pour into your own cup, to invest in yourself, to sharpen your skills and work on your level up because no matter what changes around you, no one can take that away from you. So exactly. it's so important. And, you know, I don't want to understate, you know, the, how, you know, 
what that experience can be like because it can feel and again like i've said you know i've been there where you it's just it, it can be really impactful it can be devastating it can be traumatic at times you know and so i don't want to understate that you know um the impact of being through going through some sort of a real big life change yeah i agree what advice would you give to someone who is experiencing change right now in their own life or in their workplace? Um, and so I'm sure you have all heard this before, but hopefully this will bring a different, you know, lens to it. Um, I think for me, uh, being open to the growth that change brings, right? Change can be very uncomfortable. We like stability as human beings. We want to be stable. So when things are uprooted and change, it doesn't always feel good. But always going back to what can I learn here? Or what is what where is there an opportunity for growth for me in this experience is always what I go back to for myself. You know, it's always just checking in for, you know, in order to to be our most, you know, our most abundant self and whatever we have in our vision board, we have to go through change. You know, I think that one thing that will that also helps me sort of sort of stabilize that is just finding that stability inside of myself, because really that's the only place you can find stability. Yes. You know, I mean, everything else is, you know, can change. And so the real stability comes from what we can provide inside of ourselves. Yeah. And you can't control what happens, but you can control your energy and what you bring to the table. I completely agree. And as a mom in the middle of chaos in, in that journey um, with a five-year-old and an almost seven-year-old. We still very much read The Hungry Caterpillar, but I think that book very much sums up embracing change, right? Yes. Turning from a caterpillar to a butterfly. Well, Jeanette, I think that that is our time. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us and being willing to embrace the change of sharing a story with an audience like The Mom Project, who is, like I said, your community. I feel a little bit better about embracing change. If you'd like to connect with Jeanette, the team has placed her info in the chat. And I will now hand it back over to one of my biggest inspirations and a change agent herself, hostess with the mostest, Rafi. Right? <laughs>